teams, Omar Sayed, and uh, have my team over there as well, uh, the four guys sitting in the front row. Uh, we're based out of Dallas, Texas right here, and Chartis is working on building the foundational technology that's going to be needed if we want to build global scale decentralized networks. So what are the problems that we're trying to solve? Um, current blockchains are not scalable. One may be faster than another, but they're not scalable in the true, true sense of the word scalability as used in the distributed systems world. They're also not very decentralized. Um, they used to be decentralized when you know anybody could start up their PC and join the Bitcoin network, but they've become very centralized now. There's very few entities and that actually do mining, that, that have the control of it. And they're also not efficient. Um, the, the amount of energy that you use in order to do the consensus is just skyrocketing. I don't think that's gonna be sustainable forever. So what's the goal? Um, basically, we wanna have linear scalability. What that means is that as you add more nodes to your network, the network should be able to process more transactions, store more data, and in general, just truly scale to what the needs of the network are. We want to maximize decentralization. What that means is you need to be able to use standard off-the-shelf hardware in order to be able to run your nodes. That's the only way you're going to get decentralization. You don't want pooling. You want independent nodes that are that are anonymous and independent of one another. That's how you maximize decentralization. And we want to maximize efficiency. You don't want to use a lot of compute resources to do your consensus. You want to use more efficient algorithms. So what are the use cases for this? Well, we envision an era when there will be really large global scale decentralized networks that need to accommodate billions of daily active users those kind of networks will need millions of transactions per second. Imagine a global currency that was truly global, where everybody in the world used it. Uh, we originally started off with the vision of doing a universal basic income coin, and because there was no platform that could handle that, that's why we're building charters. Imagine a global decentralized identity network that's based off of community issued identities, not something that's just assigned by a government. Then we can really have the whole world having an identity. Imagine global communication networks, that's huge. Social networks, <coughs> country coins, these kind of things are huge. So, Shardis. Currently, uh, we're using an ERC-20 token. We did not do an ICO. Uh, we're self-funded in a way. Uh, our token is out there, and anyone that wants to buy the token can buy it. The project gives the tokens to its developers rather than selling the token to investors directly and raising money. So that bypasses the whole SEC, you know, uh, how we test, um, and also, uh, it, it creates a new way of doing open source software development. We basically tokenized open source software development. <coughs> Our token is exchanged on the Uniswap exchange, and it's really, uh, I feel it's like a really efficient way to do <coughs> uh, raising capital, actually. Uh, How is the token used? Um, so basically the token would be used for licensing the software. So once the shard of software is built, if you're a private enterprise and you want to use Shardis within your company, you would get a Shardis license by purchasing Shardis tokens and sending them to our smart contract, which would burn those tokens and issue you a license token. So that decreases the number of Shardis tokens that are out there it increases the value of the token for everybody else. 
if you're building a public network that's going to be available for everybody to use. In that scenario, you're most likely going to have some sort of a coin on your own network. So we ask that you give 1% of your coin to the shardist token holders. So that's kind of like a dividend for the shardist token holders. So that's the model that we're using. So our current status, uh, we've built our enterprise server. Uh, the, the enterprise server doesn't incorporate sharding. <coughs> as you can tell from our name, uh, the key technology that we're bringing to the blockchain space is sharding. Uh, that's been used in the database world for, for decades, but hasn't been applied in the blockchain and distributed ledger world. Our global server is what we're working on right now, and that's going to incorporate the sharding, and that's gonna allow unlimited scaling. If you need more PPS, you just add more nodes to your network. And right now we're in the process of forming partnerships with blockchain consulting firms. Uh, we're in talks with people that are potential users of our network for their applications because their applications has a really high transaction throughput need. And our token is available, so you don't have to buy it from the project. You can just buy it uh, online. Hey, Greg. Uh, hey, Omar. Uh, could you just uh, explain a little bit more about why sharding is so important for the audience and how that allows you to be truly scalable compared to these other networks who aren't using sharding and may need to use something like off-chain services to <coughs> scale and uh, and therefore not truly be, uh, uh, be utilizing the blockchain uh, benefits? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, as, as we look at wanting to have more and more transactions being carried out by these networks, uh, what projects like Ethereum are finding is that they want to actually do side chains because any one chain, once you've you know, defined a blockchain, it's going to have a certain limit on how many transactions it can do just because you've got a certain block size and you've got blocks coming out at a certain speed. So that's gonna limit your transaction throughput. So the only way those networks can scale is by trying to have more chains. And that can work to a certain degree, but it doesn't allow fast, immediate communications when you want <coughs> data to be available readily in lots of different parts of the network. So to get around that problem, you really need to have sharding at the core level of your technology and not as something that's added on as a second layer. So what is sharding? So sharding basically is taking the nodes that you have in your network and dividing them up into smaller groups of nodes so that transactions can be routed to the appropriate group of nodes that can process that transaction. And so when you do that, you get parallelism proportional to the number of shards that you have in your network. Good answer. Yes. How unique is this idea? Like, there's nobody out there doing sharding or clustering out there in the blockchain world right now? There are, there's about 10 projects that are looking at doing sharding. A lot of the projects are doing only transactional sharding, which means that the, the transactions are routed to nodes, but every node has to hold all of the data. So what we're doing is state sharding, as well as transaction sharding. So state sharding means that the data itself is distributed across different shards. And that becomes a really, really hard problem because now certain transactions may need data from other <coughs> shards and you need to do cross-shard consensus, you need to do cross-shard communication to access that data. So it's a really hard problem. If you look at Zillica, uh, there's a podcast where the founders of Zillica say, yeah, we're not taking on state sharding, we're just gonna do transactional <coughs> sharding right now. So it's a very difficult problem. So there's, there's, I think we're probably the only not, you know, network that I know of, there's probably a couple more that are working on it, but they're, up, they're in very early stages. One last question. Yes. Uh, 
Um, so uh, state sharding, you see that there's going to be a great use case for uh, things that have bigger block sizes, right? Where you're able to break up uh, the, the block into these all these different sharding. So something like uh, streaming video content, would, is this where this really is uh, <coughs> beneficial? Yeah, absolutely. Anywhere where you need uh, your transactions to be, you know, processed like in a very short amount of time, and you need that data access to be done quickly across the network, and you can't afford to just have like silos of chains that are side chains because in order to do any kind of transactions between chains, you're going to have to pass through some sort of a central main chain. So if you want to avoid those kind of scenarios, that's where you know Shardis uh, brings a lot of benefit because we've incorporated that right at the at the core technology, and so we don't need to have multiple chains. In fact, but you can do multiple chains with Shardis if you want to. All the second layer technologies that are being developed, you can still apply them to Shardis. But at its core, Shardis already has a very high TPS and a lot of data uh, capacity.